What's going on guys? Out from Micro Grind of Poker School here. So I'm playing a daily free roll on Global Poker and we are about three players from the money and I have the chip lead so I figure let's record a video. So that's what we're gonna do. We're on a short break. I got about maybe four minutes left. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump over my computer screen right now and I'm gonna kinda show you guys what the action looks like, where I am, how many players are left and also one hand that really got me back into the tournament a while ago. So let's hop on over to my computer screen. All right, guys, so you're taking a look at my computer screen and we're on break. I have just over two minutes left on the break. So this tournament, this is the daily gold coin challenge where you have to see at least 50 flops in the gold coin games. Doesn't matter which ones you play. The funny thing about this tournament is that I didn't have enough flops literally about seven minutes before the tournament. So I opened up this software. I loaded up something like 12 tables of the gold coins games and I made it just within less than, than a minute to hit those 50 flops and I got into this tournament. So this is about like maybe the fourth one of these I played. And I haven't made it to the money yet. Here I am, sitting in first place. Um, I was close to being out of the tournament. We're down to 30 players. It pays out top 27. And that's around a, a 25 to 1 return on your investment. It's 11 cents to get in here. Obviously, I don't want that. Um, I want to get up here, of course. But I'll take whatever I can get because I know that tournaments are high variance. So... In regards to this tournament, I only recorded one hand history, so let me go ahead and pull that up, um, and let me show you the hand that got me back into the tournament. We have a minute left before the tournament starts, so if I can get this to load, all right, let's go. Let's check it out. So, pocket kings, pocket kings. So I'm sitting with uh, 3,300 in chips. And for some reason, it's not showing the blinds. Um, I don't know why it's not showing the blinds, but I don't remember what the blinds were. I had less than 10 BB left at this point in time. And the crazy thing is that I open jam, this person calls without rejamming. This guy raises and rejams in. This person just flats calls without rejamming all in. This person goes all in as well. And then this person decides to call rather than to put this person all in and go all in. So, I mean, I, I, it's kind of confusing to me. Uh, and you can look at how many different side pots there were. And so we go to the flop, 8, 6, 10. Now they, this person decides to go on, they decide to call. And let's just take a look. Um, this person, let's go all the way down to the river so we can see everybody's hands. Pocket jacks, ace king, ace king, ace queen, and pocket kings. So kings are dead. Kings are not going to flop. There's one ace left in the deck unless somebody over here folded it and there's two jacks. So the person who has the best chance to suck out and beat everybody is the pocket jacks. But we hold, we take down a massive pot and we go from 3,300 up to 1,200. That took me to top 10. A little later in the tournament, I got into a hand. I had around um, 15,000 chips. Me and another deep stack at the table had around the same. She had a little less than me. I had ace-king. She had ace-queen. Um, I raised. She called. A short stacker called. We go to the flop. An ace hits. I bet around two-thirds pot to put the short stacker all in. She raises all in. The short stacker folds, I call, and she shows ace-queen, I show ace-king, and we double up. And so we are at the point in the tournament, and let me go ahead and pull this stuff over because I'm going to need it. I'm not a tournament player, so for those of you that are ICM experts, if you see me doing things that aren't um, exactly per what ICM dictates, I'm um, sorry. Um, like I said, I'm going to make mistakes. That's just part of the game. And um, I think we call here. I think we call a king nine off just to try to bust him out. Um, and then here, I think we just go all in. I mean, she has a better king good for her. I still have a huge amount of chips. King nine. So we're looking to chop. We just need to fade an ace. And we chop it. He's out. We should be down to something like 29 players, getting close to the bubble. The funny thing, I mean, of course you're going to expect with these tournaments that people don't play correctly, and of course they don't play correctly. I mean, people are just chipping themselves out. The person that went out in this spot let herself chip down to 40 chips and just blinded out. And so we're going to be in the money fairly soon. Um, people are, are playing pretty conservative as you would expect it is a free roll which is you know it makes it more interesting that people are playing as conservative as they are um i wish i could make this a little bigger where the actual screen there we go 
So I want to make it bigger for you guys. So it's easier for you guys to see. And it still gives me room for my calculator. There we go. That looks good. So blinds are at uh, 800, 1600 with a 160 Annie. I couldn't even see this earlier. I was wondering what the Annie's were. It was so small on my other screen, I couldn't tell. So we are sitting on around 26 BB. Pocket sevens. Um, see, this is where the tournament's going to be just super high variance at this point. Let me move this back over to my other screen. I think with the pocket sevens, uh, effective stacks here are 10 BB. I think we ship those in. Let me take a look at my push fold chart. Um, and it actually isn't with. Um, actually, it's, it's pretty close. I, I think that we'll min raise. I think we could jam, but I think we'll just min raise. I think it's a lower variance route. Um, and we get heads up versus do seven. So yeah, I mean, rather if she, unless she gets a running, running card, she gets a six right now, we're going to chop. Um, if not, we're going to win. So, I mean, I'm using push full charts and with, I mean, it's all based upon how many players are left. I guess I should have pushed there. I was looking at the non antis, but again, like I said, I'm not an ICM expert. Um, a7, A7 for the effective blinds. The problem is these 10 blinds here. And taking a look at this again, it says ace do suited with eight left, ace three. Um, I Obviously, I'm not really sure. I think we should raise this up. I, I think we actually fold. I don't know. I mean, you guys tell me. I'm going to make mistakes. I don't play these tournaments on a regular basis. I just started playing the free rules on here. So you guys tell me where I make the mistakes um, so I can fix them. I think the A7 might have been a jam, but I don't know. I'm not 100% certain. So let's see if we're in the money yet. And let me just go ahead and slide this down over here. I don't, so I can see. It looks like it says we're at 28, one from the money, and the guy in 28 has less than one BB left. Let me slide this back out over here so you guys want to see it. Um, so if we get into the money, I think what I'm going to do, and of course we should get into the money when I'm sitting in first place with a pretty big chip lead. I have 46K, second place has 30, just under 35K, third has 31K. But the levels are so quick on these things, things can change very quickly. So, I mean, let's hope that the run good continues and... Uh, and we continue to bust up the ranks in the payouts. So next level is going to be 1000 2000 with probably a $200 ante, 200 chip ante. 28th, down to 364 chips. So again, people just letting themselves blind out. 27th with just under 1900 chips. Um, people don't know how to play MTTs at all. And uh, I guess you see this a lot in low stakes tournaments where people will just play down to the very last amount of chips until they have a hand they think is premium. Otherwise, they're going to muck them and fold them. I'm still I'm still troubled by that a seven suited. If I should have opened jam there or not um, into the ten BB effective stacks. Um, one guy probably had eight, one guy had 10. And then you, of course you had the short stack with like five BB. So let me know. I mean, according to, to ICM with those people's left behind is a seven suited a jam with three players left to act. And I, I'm pretty certain it is now that I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. So we got a big pot, 20 K in the pot. Wasn't playing attention. Flash versus Big B killed ya. And all the money should be going in on the river, especially when the spades get there with them having next to no money left behind compared to the money in the pot. So looks like we're going to be in the money. Or pretty damn close to it if we're not already there. More time, more time. He must have nothing other than just a naked queen. You 
Yeah, any fault. Wow. Well. Putting himself to the point where he's pretty much out of the tournament. The way that he played that hand. And I didn't pay attention to the entire tan, so I'm really interested to see um where's some of the best sizing screwed up. Let's just take a look real quick. Since I'm gonna fold that hand. So he opened limps. First mistake. He bets a pot size bet on the flop. Flash calls a pot size bet. And then he has 5,000 left behind. Then he bets a min bet, which, I mean, this just make, doesn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, I mean, okay. Oops, and this is something that I always do with Global Poker, is I always accidentally close the browser, and I have to log back in. And uh, lucky me, still in the same hand where I folded under the gun with the 9-3 off. So not a big deal. A lot faster to log into here than it was on Ignition. Ignition, if I accidentally close the software, the software crashes. You gotta boot the software back up. It's gotta check for an auto update. You have to log in. Um, and then you have to find the table and open up the table if it doesn't automatically put you back on. So that's one of the things I like about this, especially when I'm multi-tabling, is that um, it's so much easier with this software. So we're still on a bubble. Bubble Boy sitting there with 648 in chips, 27th with just under two big blinds. So pocket sevens, if anybody jams, uh, we're definitely going to call it off, other than if Flash open jams. Everybody playing so tight because we're on the bubble. And this guy's doing more time just to hope that he can get past the bubble in hopes that number 28 busts out. So he likes to, to limp. The problem is we're both deep. If I raise, he's going to call. So I'm just going to check and try to take down a massive pot by flopping a set. Not your standard practice of uh, playing these tournaments. A lot of people are going to advocate that I raise. But he limps a pretty wide range, and he includes a lot of strong hands in his limping range. Um, I've seen him as strong as like ace jack. So I don't want to raise, especially when we're both the deep stacks of the table. I like to play small ball poker and try to spike a set. When he bets here, he obviously has it. He usually doesn't bet unless he has it. So I don't mind um, just checking there in the big blind. I don't think it's that bad versus him versus a standard person that's just loose passive and, and they're limping a wide range um, but they're raising strong hands it's going to be a little different he's just a bit unique in the way that he plays and um, it's a good thing I played a lot with him on this table because I get to see a lot of, of some of his crazy antics so that's um, perfectly fine by me we're no longer in the chip lead which kind of sucks I guess uh, Beijing house now in the chip lead sitting to our right or across the table and uh, we're finally in the money finally made it past the bubble so we made the money first one give myself a little pat on the back um, been a while with these tournaments so I haven't made the money yet playing on here for a couple weeks playing a few of these and um I did play some other tournaments here. We're just, of course, we're going to stick it in. Of course, I won some. I played some sink goes, won some sink goes. Um, played some other MTTs. Didn't catch those, though, either. Big B killed you. Thank you for the free money, sir. So now that we made the money, it's going to be interesting to see how the tournament goes, to see if people play. A little different or not what I'm gonna do with hands I'm not gonna play I'm just gonna pause the video and then as we get the hands I'm gonna play I'll be back in it so that way this video is not too long because I can imagine I'm gonna be here for quite some time and, um, and this I don't like I mean open jams your entire stack deep stack into the second and probably like the third or fourth player in chip stacks left behind her uh, flashes fourth I'm second she jams all in into both of us. I definitely don't like that because effective stack sizes between us are um, nearly the same. 
So, I mean, it's be interesting. After I see what she has with this hand, then we'll pause the video if I get a hand that's really not worth playing. Ace Queen versus Kings. Wow, okay. So I'll make a note there that she's semi deep stacked. Um, now it looks like she might just be spazzing out. This would be interesting. So is she spazzing out? Is she spazzing out or is she just waking up with cards? I mean, it's the first time I played with her. They just moved to, moved her to our table. So was going to pause the video, but let's pay attention to see what she does. Oh, Skog the Red makes the call ace nine. Well, yep, she just kind of just um, spazzing out and going to be spewing off chips unless she gets lucky. Oh, she gets lucky. Wow, backs into two pair and takes out two people. Beijing House just spazzing out and taking out people left and right. Um, pocket fives is so close to calling, but is it worth the risk being this deep? versus her um, with such a small pocket pair in this tournament with so many people below me, which is little tiny baby stacks. Uh, in terms of pay jumps, let's see where we are. I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know if I should call here or not. I, I, I honestly think this is probably a fold because we're second in chips and she's just kind of spazzing out. I'd rather wait for something up near the top of my range. If she's going to start spazzing out every single hand, then I'd want a better pocket pair. I mean, I put fives in the same category as deuces th through fours. So I'm going to fold here. And uh, she has ace jack. Wow, and they have fives as well. So, yeah. Um, interesting, interesting spot. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. So she's jammed all in with ace queen off, ace jack off. Was it queen eight? And I don't remember if that was suited or off suited. So she kind of she's kind of just passing out and just spewing chips all over the place. The question is, do we actually open ace three off suit against the deep stack that's just throwing chips everywhere, or do we muck our hand? Because this really puts an odd dynamic, something I'm not used to seeing, um, where the chip lead is just. This three hands in a row that she's gone all in. I have these three off suit. I mean, I guess we do we min raise? Do we fold? Um, I think we min raise. And then she jams, we just fold. Can't imagine she has a hand every single time. Could be a better flop, but we have draw to the wheel, so let's put a five on the turn and let's uh Let's see if she spazzes out. Not the turn I wanted to see, so just go ahead and muck my hand. So we're down to 22 people. And for the pay structure, once we get to 18, we get a bit of pay jump. Right now, it's still at 267. Then it goes up at 18 to 365. Of course, we want to make the money. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about uh, um, playing against a person that's just spazzing out like her uh, against the deeper stacks in the table as well, going all in with the deeper stacks still left to act, not only the short stacks, but the deeper ones? And, and how much equity do you think you have and what type of range do you actually call with? Like with those pocket fives, would you call an all in there? I mean, according to ICM, would you call where you've seen her do it with ace, queen, ace, jack? And, uh, and what was the other one? Queen, eight. So we are playing, this person's all in. Um, we have ace-10 suited, and we're playing how many hands? Seven-handed. I think ace-10 is on the cusp of opening. It's pretty close. I think we open. Um, I think it's near the bottom of our range, because this would be near the bottom of my range in... Um, the standard six max game. Reason I'm not at jamming all in is because I have some deep stacks left behind.
And what's Matt 69 going to do? So we're all in versus Ace 4. We have Ace 4 dominated. They're just trying to spike a 4. So 3 out, 6% equity. If we hold, we take it down and we win some more chips. And now we're down to 20 people. And uh, we're going to fold the 710 off under the gun. Now we're playing 6 max. The game I'm used to, the range I'm used to. So, going to be interesting. Flash now, fifth in chips. Beijing house number one. I'm still number two. Back to number two now with that takedown right there. <laughs> oh, it's it's quite hilarious because Flash has well, Flash has thirteen BB. Please give me aces and let her just stick the money in. So. Sorry if you hear that noise. Um, that's my hydro flask. I have ice in it. And it uh, makes clinky sounds because of how it's designed with its metal with a vacuum in between, keeping everything cold. Down to 19 players. So down to two tables. We should be down to two tables. Um, actually, we should be down to three tables. What am I saying? And flash, probably going to complete. Oh, he raises. He raises, I'm going to fold, even with the amount of money in the pot and the pot odds I'm getting. King 3 suited, it's not going to be good against his raising range when he's limping a wide range. Love this avatar. Reminds me of Ocean's Eleven. Uh, forgot the guy's name in there. Poker dude sitting on 5BB decides to open limp. Probably not the best strategy. I think you guys would agree. I mean, if he's going to play a hand, just stick the money in or fold. Down to 18 players. So now we're down to the last final two tables. And we're going to call here, getting good pot odds, and hoping that I'm so bad doesn't raise. I remember from earlier that he wasn't very prone to raising earlier. We do flop an open ender. I'm going to check to try to realize my equity. I mean, I have the worst position at the table in the small blind. Hopefully, poker dude doesn't go all in, because if he does, we're not going to call. Pot odds dictate we can't call here. Um, now, if he bet a smaller amount, implied odds would dictate we might be able to call, but we can't call. So getting something like, what, 7 to 1 there, definitely going to see that flop. So we make the pay jump. We're up to a smooth $3.65, yes. <laughs> okay, so now the blinds are really starting to bump up at this point. Um, $1,500, $3,000 with a $300 ante or three. 300 chip ante so now i'm only sitting on what 13 bb um, things should get pretty dicey from here on out and in the next 10 minutes it's going to go up to where are we 1500 300 is going to go to 2040 and i'm only going to be at 10 bb so we should if we were playing in a regular tournament where people knew kind of what they were doing it should turn into a shove fest um 
But I suspect it's not going to turn into a shove fest here just because people are just going to do their best to try to stay in the money and get as high of a pay jump as possible. So going to pause the video and like I said, um, when there's hands worth watching, we'll be back. All right, we're back. So flash limps, I have pocket kings, and I decided just to jam it all in here. Um, let me, instead of raising it, just because there's some short stacks left behind. So I figured rather than make it something like, I don't know, like um, seven, eight, or 9,000, uh, I figured let's just stick it in, especially because Beijing House, just the hand just before that, uh, opponent over here went all in for 20k. She called with king five offsuit. So I wanted to give her the chance to call my kings all in, which is some random crap junk hand, which she's capable of doing, seeing her getting it in with queen eight and king five. Um, unfortunately, she folded and my strategy didn't work, but got some chips back and um, one like what, like something like 7k in chips so I'll take it I'll take it we're down to 16 players um, after the next players eliminated take, make a pay jump to four dollars and 35 cents hey it's free roll it's close to a free roll so can't complain right um, juicy MC open limping Yeah, we're gonna check and hope for a flop of a deuce, deuce, 10. It's not what we wanted. 15 players left, made the pay jump. Next three people eliminated, we get another pay jump. So it's every three people until we get to the final table and then it goes up to just under $7. And we're gonna fold our hand and be back with the next hand that is exciting. I guess we'll wait until it gets around to the small blind. I don't plan on defending the small blind. Um, I don't plan on raising versus I am so bad. I think I just fold. And there she goes again. Let's keep it on. Let's watch this just in case Steve MC or Flash decides to call or I'm so bad decides to call. All right, so a quick update. We are down to the final 10. I am under 10 BB now. We're sitting on nine big blind um, and really not much going on with my nine big blind. So I was at, I think around 45,000 chips and with Yanti and just orbiting around, um, starting to take its toll. So sitting at nine big blinds, we are definitely in a push fold mode. And so we're going to play that way and hopefully make it to the final table. If not, we made the money. I'm happy camper and that's really all that matters so let's stick with it all right so we are just over I'd say around like seven big blinds and we are just completely card dead last orbit last couple orbits and so still setting at 10th um, Beijing house is now abusing and, and using her deep stack very effectively against the shorter stacks but I just don't have a hand that I can call with, and um, I'm just gonna fold and hope to live another hand, find something that we can open jam or call it off with. Seven nine offsuit, definitely not the hand I think we can call off with. I mean, if we're looking at with antes at six big blinds, um, seven nine suited, or I think it's close. I think it's close. Seven nine offsuit. 7-6 suited, jack-8 off. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure if I should be shoving that. I think it's pretty close. It says 10-9 off or better. So I think that's a little on the looser side. 10-4 off. Can't do anything with that hand either. And just hoping, hoping to get something semi-decent before we have to just shove really, really wide. And, um, you know, beat the mercy of the poker gods. I am so bad decides to raise. I am so bad never raises. I am so bad 
is so bad because he loves to limp and he gets him in raise. Looks like the money's going to go in. Let's see if Beijing House decides to just spaz out. No, she doesn't. She actually finds a fold. And uh, he just makes a call. Interesting enough. I mean, the money's going to go in on this flop. And if he is so bad, he's going to call. He's not as bad as we think on that flop, I guess. I don't know. Just making some jokes there. Jack-5 offsuit, what are we going to do? I mean, there's really not much we can do there um, other than just make a fold. Unfortunately, I'm not very happy about folding this hand because we are going to be down to 5.5 BB, which is not where I want to be with this hand or with this chip stack. So chip stacked William down. Um, I'm so bad. It's all in. Obviously, one of these players have to call. I mean, we have the two deepest stacks in the tournament sitting here. And then on this table over here, um, not as short of a stack of players. We have 56, 26, 35, and 15, and then 40. So, of course, the Beijing house is going to call. I mean, I, I just don't I don't see why she can't call. Um, and let's see if Flash wants to play or not. So Flash is now abusing the time bank. He's been doing it. Um, and we have Ace-King versus Ace-10. Got to fade three tens, and we're down to the final table. And we are down to the final table. So we made it to the final table. Let's get off of here, and let's make this full size. And the question is, for 5 BB with seven people left with 6 BB, do we shove Jack-9 suited? I think we do shove Jack-9 suited, so we're all in. Made it to the final table. That's the goal. Stack size is getting way too short to do anything else. We have to shove our Jack-9 suited all in and hope to live another hand. If not, I'm happy to make the final table. Uh, pay jump to the final table was just under $7 for ninth place. And of course, right, of, of all the times to disconnect, of course we disconnect now. It really doesn't matter because we're all in. Um, let's just hope that it reconnects and let's see what happens. So we get a few folds, and that's not good against Juicy Mac. We're up against Ace King. Uh, he flops a, not a king. We flop a nine. We need to flop a nine or Jack. Otherwise, we're out in ninth, and we are out in ninth place. So we made ninth place. I'm happy with that. Finishing in ninth, um, not a bad result. Um, so you know, um, we finally got a cash, and so let's take a look. Busting out in ninth place for just under $7. Like I said, this is a free roll, so I'll take it, right? Uh, essentially free roll. It cost me 11 cents. Um, made it to ninth place, ran into ace-king, but I think we just had to shove there at 5BB at this point in time. I think that uh, the tournament should be kind of, you know, a lot of shove fest. And, I mean, look at this right here. We have fives versus ace-queen versus pocket sevens. Um, people are just starting to just fucking to hit the dust and be out of the tournament and just like that three people are gone me and then them and we are down to um, the top six players left so I suspect the end of this tournament is going to go pretty quick with people just jamming on but anyways guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button um, let me know where I, you guys saw some mistakes with my play like I said I'm not an ICM expert um did my best, made it to ninth place, and I'm um, happy with the result. And if you guys like all the free content I put out, please check out my Patreon link down in the description because you guys can help support this channel for as little as $1 per month. So take care. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys at the next video.